This video is sponsored by EV, Australia's very own Tesla and electric vehicle sharing platform. Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom and thanks so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel where I discuss Tesla, electric vehicles and renewable energy. If this is your first time to my channel then hello and welcome. Take a moment to hit that red subscribe button, that way you stay informed of any new content and it also helps my channel to grow as well. Today, we're going to look at software update 2021.4.15 for my 2015 Tesla Model S here in Sydney, Australia. We're going to do that and much more right after this. Hey everyone, welcome back. And as I said, we're going to go through software update 2021.4.15 for my 2015 Tesla Model S with AP1 and MCU2 upgrade. Let's go through it right now. Okay, so nothing too terribly exciting for 2021.4.15 for my Tesla Model S. Minor cold weather improvements and bug fixes. This was present last time we had the software update for 2021.4.12. Additional enhancements have been made to improve the overall experience of your Tesla vehicle in cold weather. Now I live in Sydney, Australia. We're coming into late autumn slash winter. We don't really get that cold temperatures here in Australia, so it shouldn't test the battery too much. Uh, and I certainly over the last few winters I've had this Tesla, there's been no issues with charging in sort of uh, even single digit Celsius temperatures. So we're pretty good here in Sydney, Australia. However, we're going to go for an autopilot test drive to see if there have been any minor improvements and more importantly to make sure there have been no bugs since this update. You know, people ask me all the time, what's it really like to drive a Tesla? What happens if you run out of charge? Can you actually take it out of the city? And can it really beat a V8? And that's what I say to them, why wonder when you can check it out for yourself? Because with EV, Australia's very own Tesla and electric vehicle sharing platform, you can experience what it's like to own a Tesla beyond a short test drive. With EV, you can hire it for a few days to try before you buy. You can take it for a weekend to go on a road trip somewhere. Or you can use it as a gift to surprise that special someone who's always talking about electric cars. You know exactly what I mean. So check out ev.com.au forward slash Tesla Tom and use my code Tesla Tom for $30 off your first rental. With the growing fleet of Tesla and electric vehicles to rent, there's sure to be an EV car available near you. And now for the rest of the video. All right, guys, let's go for an autopilot test drive. See you soon. All right, light is green. So in the Tesla Model S to engage autopilot, you actually double tap this stalk down here. There's a little tiny stalk there. Or rather pull it back twice towards you. There we go. And uh, it's only got the one camera that faces forward. Uh, we don't have the side repeaters like the newer Tesla Model 3s or the Model S's for that matter. Uh, this is pretty much the first generation Tesla Model S. So, uh, you know, in the last five years, I've had very few issues with this car. I can probably list them on one hand. So I've had to replace two of the motors for the door uh, presenting uh, mechanism. And that's a known issue with Tesla Model S of my vintage. So I've replaced both driver and passenger door. Uh, I feel that the left passenger door is going to go because um, that's starting to rattle. And that's an early sign, I think. Uh, so I think that's probably going to go. That's probably the next most used one uh, as the kids uh, come out uh, on that side of the road, uh, on the you know safe side. Uh, what else? Um, we've had a leaky roof. The panoramic uh, glass roof has leaked. Uh, that was a quick fix. As the rubber seal needed to be replaced. Um, what else? So I've replaced the MCU2. That was um, electively done. I did it because I wanted the most up-to-date screen and plus the MCU1 screen uh, was starting to glitch and uh, I was a bit worried about the safety. I could have got um, a replacement under warranty uh, with the new MCU1 chip uh, but I decided to pay a bit more money to get the MCU2. Um, don't have to do that, the MCU1 chip replacement is free but I wanted the newest, uh, the newest screen. So the screen, the chip, motherboard, all that has been replaced. Uh, we added, I added out autopilot as well uh, recently. I, I never used to have autopilot for this car, um, but I feel like the car is aging. Uh, I wanted to prove that you know autopilot even five years ago is still very good today. And as you can see on this road, it's performing uh, marvelously. 
uh, really well, keeping to the speed limit. It's got traffic aware cruise control. You can adjust how close you want to follow the cars ahead of you. So I generally leave it on two in Sydney. I'm just going to reduce my speed down to 70 to keep it in line with the uh, legal speed limit. And as you can see, the cars ahead of me are slowing down, but that's okay. The car, my car is also um, uh, slowing down with it. There is still a bit of a nag with uh, this car. You still need to keep your hands on the wheel and um, just waggle the wheel every now and then uh, in order to just tell the car that uh, you're all good, you're alive, you're breathing, uh, you're in control of the car. And I certainly do recommend that, of course, anytime you try autopilot, uh, hands on the wheel. So, slight tendency there to brake a little bit slower, but that's okay. Um, you can actually lane change as well. Probably not at uh, such low speed, but I'll just turn it off because there's a car racing up behind me. I think there's probably a, uh, a minimum speed limit before it lane changes. So if I get up a little bit more speed, I'll just show you the lane change function, uh, which is pretty cool. So we're just ramping up to about 40, 44. Let's try once we get to 50 and maybe just past this uh, unbroken uh, line. Once I get past that, let's see if I can change lanes. Nope, okay. So probably, maybe there's a higher, higher requirement, a higher speed limit. Let's put it back on. Maybe it's 60. Let's see, once we hit 60, see if I can lane change. So 50, I couldn't change lanes. Okay, so, okay, I'm not reaching 60 just yet, but that's okay. If we do get up a bit more speed, I will try to lane change for you guys again. Tends to want to brake very late. I mean, I would have probably started my brake before this and you just feel the car just uh, braking a bit too hard just behind this pulsar. It doesn't um, actually um, stop at a traffic light for you. I'm only stopped here because there's a car ahead of me. Uh, so it doesn't have all the um, FSD visualizations like the uh, current generation of Teslas have. I don't have full self-driving package. Sorry, I don't have the hardware three that allows me to get full self-driving uh, for this car. Wide intersection coming up, but I kept my hands on the wheel there, so we're all good. Again, hopefully you guys can see the road. I've got, uh, of course, got the second camera with the um, dash console for you to see as well, so you can see what's happening uh, on the screen as well as on the road. All right, so at the green now, let's see what happens. Car takes off by itself quite nicely. Probably not as fast as I would have done with, um, had I been driving manually. Oh, that was a very wide intersection there. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna release it there because it just was wobbling a little bit there. So I just took it off there for a sec, guys. At the moment, I've just got it on uh, cruise control with that autopilot. As you can see with the traffic aware cruise control, it's still managing to keep um, track of the car ahead of me quite nicely. So that's a nice little trick. If you're not too sure about autopilot, just bring it back to cruise control. And it'll just have the same traffic aware cruise control function, which I quite like as well. Light has turned green. Hopefully once I get around this corner, we can start engaging some autopilot for you guys. A few buses around, so um, gotta be careful here. All right, let's engage autopilot. All right. Now again, I wanted to lane change for you guys. Um, traffic is a little bit busy here. Shouldn't be an issue once I get past this unbroken section. 
Got to get around this bus as well. Let's see what the Subaru does next to me here. Okay. Uh, do I change lanes? No, let the uh, car behind me just overtake me briefly. This is kind of slowish traffic, so just gotta always judge, of course. Okay, so we'll lane change after this section here. But again, in stop start traffic, uh, autopilot traffic aware cruise control actually works quite well, I find, because um, I suppose you having to stop, start, stop, start with the, with the foot pedals, you know, with the accelerator and the brake. Uh, I find it's, um, you know, does it quite well automatically for you. Like this kind of slow moving traffic. It's pretty good, right? It's doing pretty well. So hopefully after this section, we can start to lane change. We're starting to get a bit of speed. Let's see whether it keeps to its lane. I hope it does. Yes, it does. Okay, that's pretty good. One more traffic light. This bus shouldn't stop because it's got a triple zero, which means it's not in service. But you know, buses being buses, they are a bit slower. Okay, we just need to pick up a little bit more speed so I can do a lane change maneuver. We saw that we couldn't change lanes at 50 even. So hopefully at 60, if we can get up to that high, we can change the lane. All right, it's starting to pick up speed now. Iffy corner, no, all good. All right, come on bus, you can do it. You can do this. I'm gonna pop it up to 80. want to get it up to 60 come on all right no sorry I'm losing my patience let me change lanes for you guys first and then okay now we're past hopefully okay there we go all right we're past the slow bus now we're moving. Okay, now, now we can test the lane change maneuver. All right. Fair enough, I'm gonna swing to the right. Okay, so we can lane change at 50. That was weird, couldn't before. But we got it at 50. And the, that was a really slow lane change as well. Interesting. All right guys, well, <laughs> that's uh, today's test in sort of peak hour traffic. Uh, you got to see one very slow lane change maneuver. As you saw, when the lane changes, um, you have to flick the indicator off. It doesn't go off by itself, not like um, Model 3 or the late Model S, X, later models. All right, guys, well, that was today's video for Software Update 2021.4.15. If you enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate that. And of course, subscribe if you have not done so already yet. And uh, leave a comment below if you've uh, found an Easter egg for this software update or any other Easter eggs I may have missed in my previous videos. All right, guys, stay safe. And as always, happy charging.